So a couple people had questions about how to get your UVs into Photoshop so you can paint on them. So I'm gonna, I think I kind of rushed past that in the um, in the unwrapping um, video. So I wanted to kind of break that down. So right now what we have is um, this model, and if I grab this model, you'll see it's multiple pieces. If I go to the UV texture editor for this, um, you can see that you know this piece is that. And that piece is there, that piece is there. And it doesn't mean you have to unwrap them all in one uh, UV space, but in this case I did. And so if I select everything, you'll see that that's what I have. Now, um, you have to have the object selected and you shouldn't be on any sub-object mode. You, sh you should actually be on object mode, okay? And with being on object mode, you'll go to polygons and UV snapshot. Okay, so this is gonna kick this out to your images folder of your project. Another reason to have your project set, we'll call this temp for video. Okay. And so now we're going to choose our size. So right now it's 256 by 256, which is actually a really small map. I'll probably do 2048, and I think these are constrained, so it's going to automatically snap that to 2048. We're going to choose our image format. And right now it's set to Maya IFF, which is a nice file format, except, you know, Photoshop by default I don't think will open it. It maybe will now, but um, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and set it to PNG. Now PNG will take an alpha channel, and you got to remember that. Um, so if you don't want the alpha channel, you'll, you should do it as a JPEG. So what that means is basically if we choose PNG, the white lines will be visible, everything else will be transparent. Okay, And so I'm going to go ahead and do that and hit okay and now let me go to that folder I I can just open a new one really quick um, I'm just doing this okay so Marlowe's under game animation images you'll see that we have delete me later um, temp for video png okay so in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and drag that in, and you'll see what we get. So we get this image. Um, you can't really see what's going on too much in there, but you can see that there are some lines in there, right? And if we zoom in, we can start to see them a little bit better. And so you can start with that, but usually I start doing a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, cleanup on this. So what I do is I'll add a blank layer. I usually put that below it, and if my lines are, if I'm wanting my lines to be black um, so I can see them, then I will um, fill the background with white. Okay. Um, I can do it vice versa. If I want these, if I want those to be white, I can fill it with black. Um, but let's say white for right now. Okay. So now that that's helping, it's still a little, a little faint. So sometimes, and what you'll see, is I can just turn that white background on and off now, right? So it's still a little faint. Um, but I can uh, I can bump that up. I can select this layer, go to images, adjustments, levels, and just pull that all the way up to here. Now, if I wanted it to be white, I could do the opposite. I could pull it all the way down to here, and you'll see that um, you'll see that what I actually have is, is white lines in there now. Um, so if if that's what I wanted, I could. I thought it was black and get white lines. So it's, it's whichever one you want. Um, if it's going to be a darker object, then maybe you want to start with a darker base, and so you'll make those lines white. Um, let me go back a few steps here in history. New layer. Look at, there we go. So let's just go ahead and make them black. Adjustments, levels, make these completely black. And I'd say that's still not dark enough for me to see the detail I wanted. I can always. Um, duplicate this layer. It makes it a little darker. And so now I have two layers if I want to see it. And then I can just merge that top one down with control E to merge that down. Okay. Now again this has still got that alpha channel on it. Right? We can still turn that off and what that means is if I just go ahead and lock this layer, lock my upper layer so I can't make any changes to it, um, I can paint underneath here all I want. And so if I know that I want the robot's body to be red. I can just do that, and I can still see my um, my wireframe on top of that. 
Now before you export it, you just save that like this. So you just turn that off. Right, and so you know, let's say I did all this, painted all this how I wanted it. Let's say this is what I wanted. It's not, but let's say it is. Go file, save as, and I'll just go ahead and put that in my source images folder. We'll call this um, temp for vid. Um, your call on this, um, targets work well, JPEGs are a little lossy, I wouldn't use JPEGs, some people use PNGs and TIFFs. Um, if you're needing an alpha channel, you're definitely going to need to use a target, a PNG, or a, a TIFF. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do target, hit save. And you'll see that now what I can do is if I go to this Lambert material we have and map in that that file that we just created. Forbid. You'll see that it you know, applies the material on the parts we painted and you know white on the parts we didn't. Um, I mean I guess technically we painted it white as well. Um, so an example of um, you know, some of the painting you could do, we go and hit open on this and see what uh, what the material really would look like on this character. And you'll see that within the um, UV texture editor, all of the, the mesh is lining up. And so there's a little bit of extra stuff going on here. There's some painting on here. There's some uh, photo manipulation. There's some uh, um, some um, occlusion baking uh, because this was for a game. Um, but you get the idea of, of kind of what the what the results can be. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll go into texturing a little bit more in the future, but hopefully that will uh, will get you off to a good start. So let me know if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.